Here we go. It is 730 Thursday morning. I'm Jason DeRussia. Welcome to the CBS News Minnesota Morning Update. I was just looking out our window here in downtown Minneapolis, 11th and Marquette. And besides the person walking around with uh, bright green duct tape and a stack of papers, I see snowflakes flying around. Ah, yes. Minnesota spring. We're used to, you know, we get snow out Easter sometimes. Although this year's Easter is pretty late. Here's your forecast today. Yep, mid-30s. It should be in the uh, upper 50s, I believe. So that's cool. Do you want to see a seven-day? What do you guys think? Seven-day forecast? Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Here it comes. Yeah. That's straight-up misery. That's seven days of trash is what it is. Ah, uh, what a weird spring we've had. Yeah, I know, like, Riley's trying to sell Wednesday as a good day. 54. Eh. Still low temperature at 36 in the morning. Showers during the day. Chance of snow on Easter Sunday. That's kind of fun. I don't mind, like, an Easter egg hunt with a little, uh, little snow out there. That's okay. Um, but this is, this is our life, everyone. Drink it in. Okay, Easter is Sunday, and I am not a big candy person. I think we've talked about that before. Uh, but I do like Easter candy, and there's a new survey where, what is it, 65% of Americans say Easter, of all of your holiday candy lineups, Easter is the best. I don't know, do you think Halloween is better or Easter? I do think Easter has more interesting candy. Cadbury, the Cadbury egg. Number one on the wish list for what people want in their basket. Then it's Reese's peanut butter eggs, Starburst jelly beans. The peeps are among the least popular candy. But we want to know from you, what do you want in your Easter basket? If you don't celebrate Easter, what do you uh, want in your tummy? What's your favorite of these candies? Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. I'll tell you my favorite. It is not one of the candies that we've mentioned. I'll share that coming up in a moment, but leave your comments on Facebook. We'll read through some of those uh, comments in a moment. Let's update you on some of the news stories today that we're keeping an eye on, and there is cleanup going on. I mean, we had severe weather the other day in parts of Minnesota. We take you south where powerful storms blew through Tuesday night, and EF2, yeah, that's a strong tornado. Look what happened to Teope. Small town nearly wiped out. We're just north of the Iowa border. There were two people hurt in this. National Weather Service says at one point this tornado was 250 yards wide, stayed on the ground for at least seven miles. And the images from the drone there are just really showing the scope of the damage. Winds whipping as high as 130 miles an hour. This is a town of fewer than 75 people, but the damage is overwhelming. Homes leveled, trucks upended, uh, stuff just tossed around. Uh, with incredible force wrapping around trees. My wife said it felt like our house was getting sucked up. She just said, I felt a suction. And people in this end of town, of course, said what everybody said, it sounded like a train. And our ears popped, and then we heard the noise, and then my boy's like, I smell something wet. So we came up after it was all done, and yeah, we saw that the window was broke out in our living room, and on that side, the two bedrooms were totally the is gone. It's crazy. You see it on TV, not you don't live it yourself. Breathtaking to see in person, and certainly when it's your own home. Uh, you know, along with that, as we always see, people coming together, people working to clean up, community there for their friends, there for their neighbors. That is, uh, it is the human spirit, right? We come together. We wish we didn't have to, um, but people are taking care of each other, and we will not forget the people of Teope, that tornado, one of two that touched down in Minnesota. The other one, still a big boy, EF1, 100-mile-per-hour winds in Spring Valley. Not too far from Teope, but, you know, two, two tornadoes. This one damaged some farm buildings and some trees, so nobody hurt there. Severe weather in the southern part of Minnesota. We take you to North Dakota, where heavy snow is part of life in Grand Forks. No sign of spring there. Look at, look at just how 
wet and chunky the snow is. Yeah, you got to build a snowman. At least a foot. Some parts of North Dakota reporting two feet of snow. Slushy, wet, tough to shovel. Oof. All right. Let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. Lots of excitement for the Timberwolves as they're in the playoffs. Yes, the first time in four years. But let's look at the big picture. It's been 17 years, two times in the playoff. A long-suffering fan base. You know that I love the Timberwolves. I love the NBA. And so this is sweet. So much fun. And the tickets go on sale today for the first round of the playoffs. There are going to be a guaranteed two games played at Target Center. You know, maybe we sweep the Grizzlies and then, you know, we don't need that game five. But game five will be here as well. So tickets for the home games. Uh, the first home game is Thursday of next week. Uh, 630 tips. So that is very nicely timed for my needs. Uh, tickets go on sale at 10 this morning, right after you watch mid-morning here on WCCO. Bummer about the Little Mekong Street Fair in St. Paul. It has been canceled for the third straight year now. Pioneer Press reporting that the Little Mekong Night Market, such a unique event in St. Paul, but they can't do it again. It would be over the 4th of July. And this is something I think we're going to hear more about going forward. If you have like a festival or a night market like this, you need to hire police to do security. And the cost of policing have nearly quadrupled. Um, you know, the police department has to recoup costs, but we got to figure out a better way to do this, right? Would have taken up half the event budget. You know, these kind of things are important. We got to figure out a way to pay for them. This morning, we still don't know who won the Mega Millions jackpot, bought the ticket in Ramsey, Minnesota. We may never know uh, because they don't have to come forward anymore. Do you guys think that's good or bad? I suppose it's good, right? Like if you come forward, you open yourself up to every third and fourth cousin that you never met in your life. Uh, scammers, all of that stuff. But I don't know. I like people coming forward. You want to meet them. You want to know the story. Maybe they'll come forward. Come forward here on the CBS News Minnesota Morning Update. 110. Eh, it's about 106, 110, somewhere in there. Million buckaroos. That mega millions jackpot was purchased right at this holiday gas station in Ramsey. Uh, so there you go. Names are kept private. They changed the law. It used to be the law where you had to come forward. The idea is that the lottery is run by the government. And there's a public interest in knowing, like, for real that they gave the money away. It didn't go to the lottery director's, uh, you know, spouse or kids or whatever. Um, but they changed the law to try to protect privacy. Uh, can you keep that secret, though? If you win $64 million cash, you're probably telling somebody, right? Uh, Sane Foundation in St. Paul has opened a new state-of-the-art facility and we wanted to take you inside and show you this in St. Paul because it's really cool. Uh, big fan of the Sane Foundation. They really focus on connecting young people with tutoring op, uh, uh, opportunities, job training, a safe place to play. They're really working to combat inequities in our community. They got classrooms to deal with physical health, overall well-being in the community. It started really as a soccer program, Tony Sane, of course. Uh, a World Cup uh, soccer player for the U.S. back in the day. Got a quarter mile track. Uh, you can have pickup games of after school flag football. Got that area for kids under 10 to play. And they're also putting the finishing touches on a tech hub, which is an investment to introduce more kids to careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. So this will be a new tech room. There'll be hubs like this. Kids will have iPads. They're turning that closet into a office. So, again, kids will be able to learn how to do coding in here. A lot of fundraising, of course. Community partners help make it all happen. Delta Dental of Minnesota, uh, their foundation made uh, some of this happen. The Sane Foundation also partnering with the city of St. Paul to run and expand the center. It is spending $10 million for work here and across the state of Minnesota. Uh, if you're going on a flight or going on a train or taking a bus... Uh, better keep that face mask around because the mask mandate has been extended. CDC extended the federal travel mask mandate for two more weeks. So until May 3rd, you know, we have seen COVID cases starting to flare up on the East Coast again. 
This was going to expire on Monday, and officials say they want to monitor this recent uptick in COVID cases. Airline industry, look, if you're the airlines, you're sick of enforcing this, right? And they've been pushing for the government to drop the federal mask mandate. Um, so we'll see. Coffee drinkers, uh, cool effort going on. And you don't even have to be a coffee drinker to like this. Uh, two different coffee companies are collab, and they're calling it Coffee Collab. It's the Get Down Coffee Company in North Minneapolis and Folly Coffee based in St. Louis Park. Uh, they are coming together on this effort. And the way they're doing it is pretty cool. Both coffee roasters roasted a different bean separately, and then they blend it together. So it's not just about these two companies coming together. It's different. Uh, it's city and suburb. Get Down is a black-owned coffee company. Folly is white-owned. It's black and white. It's cultural kind of collision, which is what Houston White, the owner of Get Down Coffee, kind of calls his mission. So interesting stuff. Can't wait to try it. Limited supply. We'll have a link to get it online. All right. Maybe coffee is your sweet treat, but maybe it's Easter candy. We're asking in advance of Easter this weekend, what's your favorite? Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Favorite Easter candy is Peeps in every color. Yep, the yellow ones are traditional, but a nice uh, bright pink peep, bright green. Why not? Thanks, Hannah. Becca says Cadbury eggs, of course, the Robin's eggs. Oh, Robin's eggs are my wife's favorite. Anything shaped like an egg works. Alyssa loves those Robin's eggs, and I think it was two years ago you couldn't find them. There was like a supply chain issue, and she was freaking out. So this year, the Robin's eggs have been procured Thanks, Becca. Here's Judy. Black jelly beans. Oh, a controversial take. Black jelly beans. I like them. Kind of licorice flavor. Cadbury eggs again for Judy. No one in my family likes Cadbury eggs. I'm the only one that likes them. They're too small, though. They used to be bigger. This, this is how they get you. Cindy's on board as well. Cadbury eggs. I'm waiting to see if anybody says my favorite. Thanks, Cindy. Here is... Carrie with the Reese's holiday eggs. Overrated. I think the Reese's holiday egg is overrated. I do like a Reese's peanut butter cup, but uh, the holiday egg, there's just too much of that milk chocolate. That's, that's my view on that. Thanks, Carrie. Oh, malted milk ball eggs. Yeah, those are good. Or jelly beans. None of you said my favorite. My favorite is the mini Cadbury eggs, where it's like, chocolate on the inside. It's like a like a blown up M&M, right? That candy crunch on the outside. I could sit down with a bag of those and pretty much polish it off. And maybe I will. Uh, I am off tomorrow. Uh, gonna be uh, going down to Chicago to celebrate my mom's 70th birthday. How about that? Uh, my mom looks at me and is like, how do I have a 47 year old son? And I look at her and think, how do I have a 70 year old mother? It seems that time marches forward, right? Thanks everybody for watching us here on the Morning Update. Heather will be here for you tomorrow and you have a great Thursday.